<laughs> okay, once again, welcome the public present and those watching at home. We uh, let's see quick attendance. We have uh, both uh, Trustee Smith and Trustee Malvesto are excused tonight. We still do have a quorum, so we will conduct the business uh, on the agenda. This time, I'll entertain uh, additions or deletions to the agenda. <coughs> And somebody make a motion to delete action item number three. I will make the motion. Okay, moved by Trustee Posiask and uh, second by Supervisor Loftus per the request of the uh, airport manager to delete action item number three. Any discussion among the board? Uh, with none offered, those in favor of removing action item number three, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? That will be removed. Any other additions or deletions to the agenda? Mr. Mr. Supervisor, I move that we add a uh, presentation um, resolution thanking uh, Ann Jeverowski for her uh, service to the Planning Commission and ZBA. It's on there. Oh, it's, already it's, on there. it's already there, but oh, sorry. We'll, we'll, we'll make sure we do it. <laughs> All right. Um, any other additions, deletions to the uh, published agenda? Okay, with none offered, those in favor of approving the agenda as amended, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. The agenda stands amended. With that, we will move into our tonight's public hearing. And that is you, Miss Miss Boyd. For those of you not familiar, this is uh, Miss Brandy Boyd, the, our township's new recreation director. Uh, we're going to be talking about community development block grant. Miss Boyd. All right. I just wanted to give a quick overview overview of what community um, development block grant money is. Um, it's um, through the Housing and Urban Development, and it's grants set aside um, to help improve economic, social, physical um, environment and el for eligible communities. Um, we are allocated um, money through um, the Housing and Urban Development um, based on community need, um, extent of poverty, population, housing overcrowding, age of housing, and popu population growth lag. Um, so, Rosio, we're very fortunate in our living situation, so um, we are not allocated as much money as some of other communities are. Um, and they go through a review process every so many years. Um, usually, um, we are given an anticipated amount of money that we are eligible to apply for, and every once in a while, there's an adjustment. So, last year, when monies were approved by the Township Board, um, when we actually went to apply for the money, we were actually um, unable to apply for the full amount of what we were um, anticipated getting last year. Um, so we have new numbers that we're working off of for this year. Um, um, for instance, we were um, uh, anticipating getting $63,000 last year. We only ended up getting $40,000. So part of that, um, there was a cut in one of the funding areas um, which was um, AD, ADA improvements. So we had, um, you had approved um, improvements to the parking lot over at uh, Centennial Farm and a, a van lift. Um, we did not have enough money to do the cement project, so we are reserving the money um, from last year and hoping to add the money with this year to get a van. Um, we have three areas um, that we use our money for. Um, one is senior programming, which helps with our programs, our staffing for our senior programs, and our staffing for our van program and our Meals on Wheels. Um, we do Senior Alliance, which is a program through um, the Area Agency on Aging. Um, 32 communities participate. Um, our buy-in, our participation is um, just a little under $2,000. It's 1750 and that helps provide services beyond what we can provide for meals, in-home nursing care, emergency prescriptions, and long-term transportation issues like um, long-term treatment plans, um, things that we can't do with our local transportation program that we have. And then our ADA improvement area. Um, and like I said, this year, um, in previous years, we've done parking lots, um, improvements to our playgrounds, um, a lift for our pool, um, and then our largest project is the ADA Accessible Kayak Launch. Um, so what we're asking for this year is to spend the same amount um, in senior programming, senior alliance, and then our ADA improvements, we would like to do um, a van and lift for our transportation program. So I can answer any other questions or if anyone has any comments. <laughs> hello, hello. 
Yeah. Yeah. Brain? Yes. I mean, yeah. uh, uh, from the, for the um, uh, lift and, uh, and van, mm -hmm. have, have you, I know we're talking about just getting enough money to, to purchase anything, but have you started to look into anything yet? Yes, um, I've looked in uh, new vans and um, I found a couple of used vans that have very, very low mileage. Um, which brings the price down quite a bit. So um, the $30,000 um, would be right in the ballpark that we'd be able to get a nice van that has a lift and would have much less rest and much less mileage than what we have now. That's, yeah, that is a priority issue. Um, I just want to weigh in on the, on the kayak launch. We, there was some blowback feedback on why do we need this why do we need a universal access kayak launch? Well, it's, it's a kayak launch, it's a non-motorized vessel launch, it's a recreational opportunity. And I keep seeing more and more people coming back, our servicemen coming back impaired, shot full of holes, missing parts. And by golly, if we can provide them an access point to add some fullness to their lives, by golly, we're gonna do it. So I'm real proud of the progress you're making on that. Looking forward to getting out there with Tom Melvesto and launching kayaks and Kathy Walker and all those who made it happen. So let's make it happen. Okay. We all, if I know the parts are sitting in Hangar 1 right now. We're just ready yes. for a little problem with ice to uh, dissipate, but pretty soon. Pretty yeah. soon. Yeah. And we are having another public hearing, the next board meeting. So if you are in the audience at home and want to come in and um, give your opinion, we are having another um, public hearing next board meeting on the t January 26th. Yeah. The 26th. Yep. Any other comments, questions for Ms. Boyd? Okay, we'll uh, conclude. Uh, do you have any closing comments? Nope. Okay, we'll close the public, uh, adjourn the public hearing at this time and return to the regular meeting. Thank you, Ms. Thank Boyd. You. Time just on please. Let's make it uh, 737. Okay, public meeting stands, or the uh, yeah, public hearing stands adjourned. And now we'll move on to public comments on tonight's action items from the public present. Any Public comment on tonight's action items? All right, with none offered, we'll move into the consent agenda. Oh, yeah, presentation. I'm sorry, I already forgot. <laughs> <laughs> this time I'm going to invite, uh, I'm going to invite Mr. Schweiker to make some comments, and uh, I'll let him take this part of the show. Mr. Schweiker. Uh, thank you, Supervisor Loftus. Uh, I'm John Schweiker at 8533 Matthias, Unit 36. And I am the chair of the Planning Commission. And I really appreciate the opportunity tonight to say a few words about I, my former colleague on the Planning Commission, Ann Jevorowski. Ann's a great lady and one of my favorite people. I've been on the Planning Commission since about 1991. You might say to yourself, geez, that's a long time. But when you're sitting some, next to someone that's been there twice as long, you know, it doesn't seem quite so long. She had the prerogative as, uh, as the senior person to be able to call me a junior member, but she was too polite to do so. <laughs> and uh, was not on the commission when I, when I came on in uh, 1991. She uh, came back, she was on intermittently and came back on probably around 1998, okay, and she immediately became secretary for the uh, commission. And at that point also uh, took on some responsibilities uh, on the Zoning Board of Appeals and recognizing at the time that this was the lady that was in her 80s, you know, that was no small task. It's tough enough to be on the Planning Commission at times. It's uh, <coughs> even more so to be on the Zoning Board of Appeals. But um, Anna in her role was uh, our historian. You know, she sat next to me for years and I'd get a little nudge, okay, and, and she, would, she would fill me in and uh, on, on something that uh, I needed to know to help to, to run, run the commission. Things that had gone on, why things were the way they were, and that we found to be really invaluable. And, you know, she didn't say much in, in the meetings, but when she said something, you needed to listen because it was important. And we as a commission certainly appreciated that. I know that uh, there was one other thing about Ann that, uh, that really struck me. Back in 1991, when I came on the commission, none of you would likely ever remember it, but it was highly contentious. There were issues all over the place, and there was a lot of uh, anger, and, and just, it, it was hard. I became chair in about 1993, and I got elected, and I kind of said to myself, well, geez, now what? 
Okay, well, I got this phone call from this legend from the Planning Commission, Ann Jaworowski, who had been chairman for, you know, a decade before I ever came on. And she called me up and she said, uh, you know, you don't know me, but I want to help you. And she invited me over to her house, and we spent an afternoon talking about the Planning Commission, the planning process, how it should work, how it could work, and what my role would be to kind of facilitate that, to make that happen as chair. She didn't have to do that, but she, she felt, a, she felt a, a burning desire to see the commission run the way she felt it ought to be run. And I was really grateful for that because it, it helped me to, to find uh, the right direction, take the right tone, and to move things ahead for the commission as a whole and for the community as a whole. And for that, I was, I was definitely very, very grateful. So all in all, um, she's a fine lady. She's contributed both to the commission and to the community as a whole for decades now. And this recognition for her is well-deserved, and I'm very pleased that you guys are, are taking, the, uh, taking the action you are tonight. So Anne, thank you very much from myself and from the Planning Commission. And you take care. Mr. Swigert, thank you. This time we have compiled, the board has compiled a, uh, just a certificate of appreciation. And uh, it's my privilege to read this into the record. To Ann Javorowski, a certificate of appreciation. Whereas Ann Javorowski has served on the Planning Commission for over 20 years, and whereas Mrs. Javorowski has also served as the Planning Commission representative on the Zoning Board of Appeals, and whereas during Ms. Mrs. Javorowski's tenure on the Planning Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals, she has provided invaluable insight, commentary, direction, and experience as a member of these commissions, and whereas Mrs. Javorowski has worked tirelessly for our community representing the Township of Gross Eel in the most professional manner, and therefore, on this date, January 12, 2015, I, Brian Loftus, on behalf of the Gross Eel Township Board of Trustees, do honor and thank Ann Javorowski for her commitment and dedication to Gross Eel Township and to our island community. And it is signed by myself, Clerk Ranka, and uh, Trustee Budney, who served with her on the uh, Planning Commission and the Zoning Board of Appeals. And from all of us, and thank you. I hope you're watching at home. I hope you're warm, safe, and sound, and comfortable. But for now, thank you. And obviously, she trained you well, John. You're doing a pretty good job with the Planning Commission. So. All right. With that, we'll move on to uh, consent agenda. Mr. Treasurer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. I'd like to make a motion. Uh, to accept the consent agenda 14-112, which includes the minutes of the December 8, 2014 regular meeting. Check registers dated September 12, 2014. Check register dated September 8, uh, December 18, 2014. An additional, it is an, ad, an additional register. Check register dated January 2, 2015. And a check register to be dated January 9, 2015. Second. Okay, moved by uh, Treasurer Van Oss, seconded by Trustee Budney for the consent agenda as published. Are there any questions, comments from the board? None offered. Those in favor of approving the consent agenda as published, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. The consent agenda stands approved. With that, we'll move to action items. This is uh, Jim Budney night, so uh, <laughs> Trustee Budney. Uh, we'll get this kicked off here. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, First, I have a motion uh, to bring before the board for the, uh, the board to approve the Municipal Ordinance Violation Bureau compensation uh, uh, 1250 per meeting per member. And also that the Bureau vacancies shall be posted in accordance with the township policy and future appointments shall be brought uh, to the township board for consideration. Support. Okay, moved by Trustee Budney, seconded by Treasurer Van Oss, and the background, the back, the this, this is new territory for a lot of people, this so. Uh, yes. Uh, Please elaborate. Within our uh, ordinances, uh, we've had uh, the Municipal Ordinance Violation Bureau has been in there uh, for some time, but it's never been staffed. And as part of our uh, program, 
uh, for ordinance enforcement. Uh, we want to staff the uh, uh, bureau. Uh, it'll it'll be made up of three regular uh, members and two alternates, uh, and uh, and obviously uh, we have in there to pay them at a uh, rate of twelve fifty per uh, per meeting. <coughs> Um, this is just a, a, a one portion of uh, ongoing putting this whole uh, ordinance enforcement uh, program together. Any questions? Well, I think it's obvious throughout the township. I'm, I'm sure there's some people who are not happy with our uh, our reopening of our of our. I want to call it our good neighbor policy. I don't want to call them blight ordinances. But it's just the the island cleanup. Some of us have wanted it for a long time. This board has been unanimous in their support for this activity. The place it just looks better, and the and the compliance, as I had in, as I had hoped fervently, that when people were aware of ordinances that we had, they they want to comply. And you know, the preponderance, the overwhelming majority, it's been easy. They they once they're advised that there's some that need to be cleaned up, they did it. So the place, there's a, a few took a little more uh, Nudgy. consultation. Nudging. Nudging. <laughs> but uh, this has been part of that ordinance. It has been uh, underutilized. It's another opportunity to make this make these ordinances work. I like to see it coming to fruition. And, uh, you know, we're, again, it's part of the ordinance. We're going to make it work. We're gonna, it's going to work better for the residents who need it. For most, it'll be irrelevant, but for some, it's it's going to be a necessary part of coming into compliance, and it's it's time to make this happen. So, I'm ready. I'm ready to make it happen. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Budney, or any uh, comments for the public in general? All right, with none offered, those in favor of approving the Ordinance Bureau appointments and compensation, 1250 per member per meeting, and vacancies approved by the board. Please signify by saying aye. Right. Aye. 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 Opposed? None offered? That stands approved. Uh, Mr. Budney? Second motion I'd like to bring uh, to the board is uh, the adoption of the Municipal Ordinance Violation Bureau rules and regulations. And uh, uh, dated December 8th, 2014. Support. Okay, again, moved by Trustee Budney, seconded by Treasurer Van Oss. And the background on that? The background on this is uh, these, the rules and regulations are what the, this bureau will uh, uh, be guided by. Uh, we sh sat down uh, with the township tr uh, attorney uh, and went over this and put it together. And these are our guidelines as to what we will be doing. I would like to say that uh, this bureau will, will not be looking into the violation itself. Uh, if uh, if someone doesn't think they have a violation or they've been uh, a, 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 they've gotten a notice of a violation and error, they would have to go to uh, the court to discuss the violation. This bureau will only take care of uh, ticket amounts and uh, and time to correct. When are, where are these? Are these available for the public to read? Are they? They. Uh, they or when they'll be approved, they will. When be? they when they'll be approved, they will become part of uh, our uh, uh, yeah, procedures well, and uh, uh, policies and procedures. policies and okay. procedures. There'll be an uh, appendage to that. Okay, I just want to, if anybody. Yeah. So they will to be available to the public. Absolutely. If anybody wants to come to the violations bureau and plead his or her case, they know where to find the the, the rules going in and we'll get this publicized. This was the uh, subject of our study session prior to this and the study session in, back in December. Uh, the board's gone over it. We've got a little bit of discussion on this. We're all ready to move in this direction. As, as uh, Trustee Buddy said, this does not determine guilt or innocence. It's just an opportunity for a resident in a, uh, in a particular bind or for reasons possibly out of his control. He needs a little more time on his to come to compliance. The, this panel will review and possibly give an extension. Uh, but it will not ascertain guilt or innocence. It can't, it's not going to uh, let in, anybody off. Yes, in, in fact, to come before the Bureau, you, you are making, basically making the statement that you are guilty of the violation 
and uh, uh, it's just to, to work on the, the uh, time, basically to work on the time or the amount of the Now to, to assuage the fear that comes out, all the communities I've been researching on this, all you guys want to do is make money and, and this is just extra revenue. There's no revenue in this for us. You know, the, the fines are the last thing we want to impose on people. We want compliance. That's all. We just, we want compliance. And uh, if, the, if the ordinances are too onerous, then you come to us, come to your favorite trustee, and we'll work on them. And we'll, we want the ordinances to fit the desires of the community. Uh, just as an example of that, we've had, uh, we've closed 280 cases so far, 280 violations and we haven't co collected a dime, and that's exactly what we want. Yep. So I'm real proud of the progress, and I'm real proud of the residents who, again, once most of them, as soon as they were aware that they were in violation, cleaned it up, haven't had a problem. Again, we haven't, col we haven't collected a nickel on it, or a dime, to be precise, <laughs> and uh, it, it's moving well. So other comments, questions from the board? Mr. Mr. Treasurer. Uh, <clears throat> being so this is a ordinance modification or procedure should this be a roll call vote we at, at any if you request a roll call vote it doesn't uh, matter I just yeah. want to make sure it's according well, to oil we will make it a roll call vote <clears throat> and uh, for just for purposes if any member of the board ever has a question we'll, we'll make it a roll call vote I don't have any objection to that at all is there any other before we go to vote any questions comments from the board just just another comment. Mr. Posey, yes Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Uh, I'm particularly happy to see this, this happening in the way it's happening. We're, we're making Grozeal a pretty place. There's a, there's a Latin statement about the state of Michigan about if you seek a beautiful peninsula, look about you. If you seek a beautiful island, look about you. That's what we're about here. And this ordinance is going to do nothing but embellish that. And just a little icing for the cake for later on, We've made a little change in the Greenways Open Space Committee about embellishing and making the island a little bit better. We're going to tell you about that a little bit later today, but go get them. Let's, let's make our island the pretty place that we, that we always want it to be. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Posey. Ask any other comments, questions? All right, with none offered, uh, I've got to go back to the wording here. Those in favor of... Uh, Adopting the Municipal Ordinance Violation Bureau Rules and Regulations, December, dated December 8, 2014. Um, we'll signify with, a, with aye and a roll call vote. And I will start with Treasurer Van Oss. Aye. Uh, Clerk Ranka. Aye. Trustee Posey. Aye. aye. Trustee Budney. Aye. Supervisor Aye. All aye. Motion carries. All right. And Jim, thanks for your work on that. Let's move oh. to action item number three, continuing. Continuing, uh, I'd like to have. Um, I'm, I'm sorry, action oh. item four. Yes, yes, we deleted three. Uh, uh, motion uh, based upon the recommendation of the DPS Commission and Charles E. Rain's company uh, <coughs> to award bid for removal and replacement of the laboratory base cabinets and countertops located at the Grozeal Wastewater Treatment Plant to Farnell Contracting, Inc., lowest bidder in the amount of $7,576. Uh, this, uh, this is something that was uh, put in the, you know, was part of our budget at the beginning of the year. Uh, the, the cabinets, countertops, the sink, e everything there is, uh, is, uh, is falling apart. Uh, you know, of course, being at the wastewater treatment plant, it's highly corrosive uh, air and uh, uh, things uh, only last so long. These items that are, uh, uh, we're asking to be replaced were installed in 1980, so they have given us good service. Uh, it was, as I say, listed in our capital improvement plan for replacement in 2014, and it's been budgeted for this. And this is the culmination of it uh, uh, with uh, the bid going out and Farnell contracting, getting the lowest bid. Okay, so it's moved by Trustee Buddy, seconded by Treasurer Van Oss, and you give us a quick background on it. Uh, there are a number of pictures in the 
board packet of uh, what the equipment looks like, what they're doing, and uh, again, for 35, 35 years of a constantly operated plant, um, it's time. Questions, comments from the board? Moving along with keeping our wastewater treatment plant uh, in compliance with ever-changing regulations. All right, with no questions, comments from the board, those in favor of approving, let's see, the uh, bid for removal and replacement of the laboratory base cabinets and countertop located at the Gross Hill Wastewater Treatment Plant to Farnell Contracting Incorporated, lowest bidder in the amount of $7,576. Those in favor, please, aye. please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? None offered. Uh, that was also approved, <coughs> and that will complete our action items for tonight. With that, we'll move on to clerk's report. Clerk Ranka. Mr. Supervisor. So we, we uh, can you hear me? So, so Groziel did it again. Uh, once again, we're the uh, safest uh, community in, in uh, the state of Michigan. This is actually in the, uh, the mid-sized cities of between 10,000 and 25,000 people. We are uh, ranked number one. To put that in perspective a little bit, Rochester is ranked number six and Birmingham is, is ranked number 10. So this is uh, all based on FBI, of available statistics on the FBI uh, webpage. Um, the, uh, the publication that's bringing this to light right now is Value Penguin, uh, but it is based on FBI statistics. So congratulations to, uh, to the police force, to the entire community for, uh, for making uh, Groziel once again uh, one of the safest cities in the state of Michigan. Yeah, seems like right. any, any way they assess it, we do very well. So, Chief, yep. pass, pass that on to the guys. Keep, keep up the good work. And that uh, completes the clerk's report. <clears throat> well, with that, Mr. Treasurer. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Investment report for the month of November shows a total of $9,838,476 invested in various accounts. These accounts generated $2,710 in investments with the average of about 0.27%. As bad as that sounds, it's a lot better than it has been. There was a zero in front of that, 27 before. The Treasurer's Office has been collecting year-end winter taxes for mortgage companies and individuals. Uh, winter taxes are not due until, this, until February 17, 2015, due to the 14th falling on a weekend and the 16th falling on a holiday. So you have a couple extra days. If you cannot pay your taxes by the due date of February 17th, there is a deferment of the due date for those who qualify. Deferment applications are available at my office and also online at the website. As of today, we've collected 75% of the total winter tax rolls. Uh, that's up considerably from last year. Last year at this time, it was about 54%. Uh, distributions to the counties and schools have been made in a timely fashion. 2014 pet tags are available at Township Hall. The fee is $6 until the end of January. The fee then increases to $12 by February, on February 1st. Be sure to bring proof of valid rabies vaccination when purchasing your pet tags. Uh, the Commerce Park Commission will meet next Monday at 7 p.m. Uh, it'll be in this room. And again, Chief, congratulations. Uh, you guys do a heck of a job. Thank you. That's all I have. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Treasurer. Move on to uh, trustee reports. Uh, Mr. Budney. Uh, thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Very quickly, DPS meeting tomorrow, uh, 7 o'clock in uh, this room, and no ZBA meeting this month. And that is all I have. Very good. Thank you, sir. Mr. Posey asked. I will make up for Mr. Brundy's brevity. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. The Greenways Open Space meeting was held on the 6th of this last month, and uh, I'm going to tell you a little bit about it, but I'll bring Woody up to, to give you a little bit more on during the public comment. Uh, BPAC meeting is on the 20th. This is the time of year, folks, when people that are interested in our bike pass and where they like them to uh, to go and what they would like to see done to them, uh, come to this meeting. This is the time of the year that we are looking for your recommendations. And by the way, our roads look pretty good, but our bike paths were sure swept nice and clean. Thank you there, DPS. Uh, we look good there. Uh, we're, we're giving you our best efforts in, in that committee to, to make sure that uh, we've got the bike path system that everyone else will envy. 
And that's, that's all stacking up to that nice community image that we have. Uh, going back to the uh, Greenway's open space, we had a woodcutting event once or twice a year, and uh, some of the comments about woodcutting is that it was too restrictive in time, and it was too difficult to, to make arrangements, and it was too small to, to accommodate the needs. And uh, this committee sat down and really worked hard on coming up with some alternatives and that they're very proud of, and we're going to start instituting them this year. You're going to see an ease in getting a permit to do the wood cutting. You're going to see at ease in being able to sign the waiver and, and, a, and a way to obtain it. And uh, it addresses three different groups of people that want to and will do uh, wood cutting on the island. And with that, I'm going to just leave it hanging out there until we have public comment. And my favorite spectator, Mr. Clark, will come up and tell his favorite trustee, whoever that might be, the, the rest of the story. Yeah, just while we are, the uh, are bricks still for sale for the absolutely. Till, how long till, is that uh, going to go? I've had a couple of requests for people. How long is that going to go on? We're we're going to hold them till February fourteenth before we place our next order. Okay, good. Uh, it's right. fi fifty dollars for for an eight right. an eight by cool. four. Thank you. Thank you. That's all I have, sir. All right. Thank you, Mr. Posiask. Um, watch how fast I am tonight. <laughs> Okay, just administrative, uh, township offices will be closed Monday, January 19th, 2015 for Martin Luther King Jr. holiday. Township offices will, of course, reopen on Tuesday, January 20th at 8 a.m. The uh, always popular Daddy-Daughter Dance on February 6th and Mother and Son Night on February 20th are coming up. Uh, your rec department keeping things lively uh, through the winter. Get your tickets at the Recreation Department, 675-2364. Uh, um, I'm going to ask... Uh, just a second. Uh, legal fees, just to stay one step ahead of you, $7,367.50, covering a lot of territory. And uh, I wanted to ask, uh, uh, Chief, you don't have to, but, but those of you who heard the uh, roaring thunder on the Detroit River on just a brutally cold Saturday afternoon, that was our fire and rescue. In fact, I'm going to ask Chief to tell a little bit about the break-in period and the new engine on the boat, but the guys were out there on absolutely brutally cold, windy, nasty day training in the airboat because probably the next rescue is going to be on a day every bit as miserable as that. And as, as, as we were training our pilots, you know, the, the, fir the first sortie you ever fly wearing chemical gear, or the first time you have to fly when a chem gear shouldn't be the first time you've ever trained with it. So you train the way you're going to go to work. Chief, tell us a little bit about the boat and uh, What's going on with the new engine? Well, it's that time of year again, and we've already been out twice, and those were for duck hunters, and now we're coming up on the fishing season. So, we, you know, we, we pray the fishermen are smart and do the right thing and get in off the ice before it does its thing. But uh, we are still finishing up our break-in period on the motor, the, the replacement on the motor, and then we're also doing a lot of heavy training on maneuverability on the piece of equipment. Because it is a fan boat, it's uh, kind of an unusual beast to learn how to control. Uh, particularly on ice. So that's what they've been doing all weekend. Uh, they've been getting in the water. Uh, if you've ever gotten in the water during the winter months, if it gets down inside your collar, those suits, it's pretty, pretty cold. Uh, you, won't, you, you do it once, but you try to avoid ever doing it again. But uh, again, that's what they're doing right now. We're out fire training. We've already had a couple of structure fires this winter already. So we, we've been busy. We ended our year up this year, uh, well over last year. Uh, we had about 454 rescues and uh, 138, uh, 39 fire-related calls. So we broke 600 this year heavy. And uh, it seems to be not letting up this year at all either. And then just on a, uh, a note with the police department, I just want to make a, a kind of a quick comment. The, the residents need to know that the Grosville Police Department and Fire Department, probably two of the, the uh, only organizations probably down river that work so well together. Police and fire, they help us, we help them. And the police are on every one of our calls, and we try to support them the best we can when they're out. And I think Joe can speak to that too. So, But uh, it's a very, very strong relationship between police and fire. You never hear any interdepartment wrangling between those two organizations. So, But uh, appreciate you having me up, Supervisor. And yeah, we're out busy training. Good, good. And again, 
if you never have to launch that boat on a real rescue for the rest of the winter, <coughs> it'll be just fine, folks. So <coughs> it, remember, it'll be just fine if they don't have to come out and rescue you. But uh, public safety team is the way I look at this, and, and it shows. Rank number one, safest community, crime, and uh, response within a couple of minutes. You know, we'll, we take care of our residents. So, Chiefs, thank you. Um, one up, okay, my, my closing item, uh, let's see. St. James has a community, free community hymn sing on January 25th. So, beautiful hymns of old. Um, Join uh, St. James Episcopal, let's see, and it's at uh, 25150 East River Road. You can call for information at 676-1727 uh, or facebook.com slash St. James GI. That concludes my report, but I'm going to ask the uh, township manager to fill us in on the latest on the ice rink. Mr. Reem. Thank you, Mr. Supervisor. Happy New Year, everyone. Um, Trustee Malvesto um, is not available this evening, but he uh, had prepared um, this under his report and uh, couldn't make it and, and asked that uh, I, I touch on these items. Um, and obviously, my Recreation Director, Brandy Boyd, is here if there are any other questions from the board. But um, the rink is open. It has been cold enough. And uh, we are pleased to make that announcement. Um, I do want to remind, this is an all-season rink. It's uh, ice and an inline rink. Um, and as we know, this project has been in various stages over, I believe it's five-plus years. Um, and uh, the, the, this project has become a reality um, thanks to many, 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 many people. Um, but there are um, volunteer groups, organizations, and so on, which I will uh, specifically address in a moment. Um, but through everyone's efforts that have been involved with this, we've made this project become a reality. And um, I, I don't say this because the, you, you're my boss and I'm standing at a podium in front of you, but uh, the Township Board, the Community <coughs> Recreation Commission, um, to governmental entities, organizations that have helped make this possible. Um, and uh, I'm going to touch on some of that history, but, you know, def definitely special thank yous. Um, it, it, one very, very important group, the Michael Horton Group. Um, for, for those of you that uh, may know and don't recall or, or, or are not aware, um, the Michael Horton Group um, is... Uh, family, friends in the class of 2010 that had done fundraising on behalf of Michael Horton who had passed away and uh, um, w w with the idea that this uh, rink be a way to recognize um, his memory and legacy um, and uh, it, it has been a tremendous um, group that have built tremendous amounts of support in the community specifically for this is um, love sports loved hockey, and really did a great job um, helping this become a reality. Um, I also want to um, make a mention, thank you to retired Recreation Director Tim Rooney. Um, everyone knows Tim, everyone knows what Tim's done, um, but he worked very, very hard and tirelessly on this project as well. Um, and, of course, his, uh, I guess, lead volunteer in rink maintenance is Carl Moore. Um, so um, there are many, many rink sponsors. And we have on the sheet here um, on your screen, this is the group of sponsors for uh, the um, numerous fundraising activities, the um, Horton Memorial Group did and as you can see there's a platinum a gold whole sponsors this was specifically from the um, golf outing um, and then all the various supporters so obviously I'm not going to read all these names um, I believe this is online um, but wanted to remind everyone uh, and uh, that w we do appreciate and, and thank them for all their support but by way of history um, 
the uh, Recreation Department and Recreation Community Recreation Commission authorized the installation of a temporary rink in the parking lot back in 2010. And in 11, we ended up putting the rink on the actual basketball court. And uh, doing so was a lot of maintenance, a lot of effort. And it was just wasn't cost effective. It wasn't time effective either. So we talked about this all season pad. We looked at the funding opportunities, the grant opportunities um, through the state, through Wayne County Recreation, and uh, knew that there was so much interest that this stressed the need to have this in the community. It was in our master plan. Um, so what what's normal? Funding. That's the next challenge. So we did receive a grant from Wayne County um, for the uh, multi-purpose pad and went ahead and had the concrete work done. And obviously that was just part of, part of the money. Um, we were able to, and I say we, the entire group, Recreation Department, the Hockey Association, the Michael Horton Group, um, the Township Board, the Community Recreation Commission, um, raised an additional fifty plus thousand dollars toward this project. And if if the board remembers, in the fall when we needed the rink boards, we were about thirty eight thousand dollars short from having the funds in this rink account in order to make that board purchase and. This board agreed to purchase the boards, which are up installed. And uh, with the challenge and the proviso that we know, myself, recreation folks, that we still have a $38,000 bill out there, and we're going to do more fundraising. We're looking at fees. We need want to make sure we get a maintenance account going. So we still have a lot of work ahead of us, and we didn't forget, but we are um, moving forward. So, and those different fundraisers are at, at various planning stages, and that will be taking place over the next several months. So we have not set a grand opening yet. We did a soft last week, if you will, uh, soft opening. And uh, even though the weather's cold, sometimes it might not be open all the time. It's, it is somewhat still weather dependent. If the sunshine, if the ice starts getting soft, if there are cracks forming and it needs certain maintenance, it'll be closed. So it, it's not, okay, it's frozen, now it's open all winter. It's going to depend. Um, we're still working out the bugs in our scheduling. We want to have open skate. We want to have hockey skate. And we're also um, doing some rentals. We get a lot of interest for that. So um, all that stuff is coming together. So um, I want to say thank you to the board the Recreation Commission, the Michael Horton Group, and all the volunteers. So, and any other questions or Brandy, is there anything you want to add? Did I miss? Leave out? We're good. So, um, thank you. Just another one of those things that makes us a, just a great place to live. So, thanks to everybody who contributed. All right, this time it is public comment. Three. <coughs> But, you know, it's past 8 o'clock and starting to yawn. Better get up there. No. All right. <laughs> Public comment. Three minutes, you know the rules. Mr. Clark. Okay, well, I'm going to talk about the wood cutting first, and then it's three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. Okay, wood cutting. Okay. Uh, Speaking as a commission member now, so yeah, right. go, I mean, three, Clark, three ways to do it. One is if you're a homeowner and you have wood behind your house that you want to cut, you come and make a... a uh, piece of paper out saying that you want us to cut on a certain day and then we go down and look at the wood and then they can cut it or we can do it off island people can do this where if they want to come over and cut at a certain time okay it's they can't do it when we want to cut they want to cut when they do fine you just tell us come over and get this the form fill it out we'll go take a look at where you want to cut and we say okay go at it and then the third way is we have scheduled times to cut, you know, like on a Saturday or a Sunday, and from 9 to 5. 
all cutting in from nine to five, regardless if you're a homeowner or you're coming in That's and do it yourself. Huh? That would be in a, in a restricted area. That's right. Yeah, you know, if you want to, you, you just can't go to the, into the open space, even though you're not a homeowner. You got to go to a certain area. Okay. So I assume the first criteria, the first situation you're talking about a homeowner is adjacent to township property or open space and wanted to go from cut his property every, onto the township property. Correct. And cut it. Okay. Right. And then the next person is the one that, uh, if they can't do that, they live in Trenton and they want to come over and cut, they come in and tell us this certain area. Well, we're going to have like horse mill and maybe park lane. There's two areas there they can cut and we can come out and say, okay, cut away. And we'll or, go on our way. It's all permitted and ahead of time. Okay. Yeah, it's all permitted right. ahead of time. Space. All right. We'll be there. Okay. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Okay. So, so you'll have two scheduled events in the year plus individual right. that, we'll that accommodate individual, the needs of we'll our people. Scheduled and sure. the people who want to cut behind their house, they can do that. But they have to tell us and we go look at it. What, what this is going to result in, very honestly, is... Uh, all of our open spaces and all of our areas that have fallen wood and kind of unsightly wood, right. we expect that we'll be able to get a get a bigger jump on cleaning it up. We're never going to run out of it. More people come off the island because this the island. I'm it's going to make things look pretty. Do it. Horse I mean, mill, horse mill in particular looked kind of rough until we started scheduling events on it, and it's gotten much better. And that's the way that we'll look at the rest of the island. Okay. Woody. Uh, you and the committee worked your tails off, and we deserve. No, Pat did a lot of work. Pat yeah, and you guys did all the work. I you guys sat did a lot of work. Not so. in my head. Good job. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. From your all favorite right. trustee. Okay. Now this is, gonna, this is about our uh, TV station that we have for us. Now the notice of hearing comes up. I can't read it. I don't know. It's real minute printing. And I look at the station all the time to see what's going on and the music and everything like that. So I like to see that, be able to read it. Okay. Also, the seventh and eighth grade basketball is also hard, hard to read what, what's printed out for that. Whatever is for the seventh and eighth base basketball players. Is that on the school, on the school channel or on the? It's on our channel. Okay. It's on our thing, but I can't read it. It's too small. Okay, all right. It's got to get bigger, that's all. And then on 17, uh, there was a police show, and the music was uh, hard to hear what they were saying. Okay? At the end, you could hear it, but at the, in, in the middle of it, it, it was hard to hear because there was music playing and singing. And Bob came out, and I could understand him, but, mm -hmm. you know. Okay. And then uh, at 10 a.m., uh, it goes blank for a half hour. Nothing happens. It, it's just blank. That's it. Okay. Technical okay. difficulties. A little but difficulties. And also, I'm hearing that somebody uh, just put their house up for sale. I was wondering if they're going to move off the island. No. Is that you? No such luck, Woody. <laughs> Good try, Woody. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other comment from the public present? Nobody hiding behind the podium. Well, with that, with that offered, those will grow, yep. wrap up tonight's meeting. Motion to adjourn. Motion? I have a motion to adjourn. Second. Second. I have a, I, well, I give it to Clerk Ranka. He was, I heard him better because that ear still works. Those, <laughs> those in favor of adjourning, please signify by saying aye. 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 Uh, none opposed. I will call the meeting adjourned at 819. Happy day, everyone. Drive safe tonight. Stay